Okay, I'd like to call to order the bylaws committee meeting of the Niles Main District Library for Monday, June 10th, 2024. At what time? At 6.34 p.m. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Uh, President Keene? Present. Vice President Trunco? Here. And I am here, Executive Director Valerie Marshall. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For public comment, we have Elliot Osherman. No, no public comment? Not tonight. Okay. Never mind then. All no right. public comment? No public comment. And no one else is here to make comment, so we can move forward. All right. Very good. And so we are in the process of reviewing the bylaws and adding changes so that we can make recommendations to the board. This is our third meeting. Uh, last time we met, we were reviewing the um, library board bylaws put out by the Secretary of State. And that is where we left off, correct? Yes. We specifically stopped um, after the section order of business. After what? Order of business. Mm. Yeah, because we were talking, I believe, about some things that were recommended by the Secretary of State and we wanted a clarification on those. Am I correct on that? We did. We were talking about um, order of business, things we might want to consider adding to the agenda, mm -hmm. um, such as approval of agenda, which I know, I believe, uh, Trustee Trunco, you mentioned the ward of the library has that, but my understanding is that they do that for things like what we do when we say, let's move this up higher because we have a presenter here, things like that. Okay. It's not usually related to adding things to the agenda for votes because uh, like we discussed last time for the OMA, we can't vote on anything that wasn't published within 48 hours of the meeting. Okay. So, I mean, do we really want to put in the approval of agenda since we move things around as needed anyway? I mean, if like, we have a presenter, we're going to move that up in the agenda anyway. Right. Is it not also for, um, in case someone wanted to add something? No, no, we can't add agenda. You can agenda add for point items for discussion, for discussion. but not for vote but not for vote. And at that point, that's usually what we use for the other section. Mm -hmm. So then I think we left off discussing whether we wanted other to be moved higher up on the agenda or whether we wanted trustee reports to be higher up on the agenda. Yeah, because we did talk about having like trustee comments or trustee reports mm -hmm. back in there. Can I have a piece of your paper? Sure. Please. Thanks. Um, can I just go back and look at what <clears throat> our agenda looks like after we discuss? We were going to keep call to order, pledge of allegiance, approval of minutes, public comment, and then we were going to make some uh, separate. I don't know if these were we making a separate line for payment. We already have, we do that now, it's just not in our bylaws. We have that on our agendas on the website now. Okay. So that was something that Margaret actually requested that we add into the bylaws since it's something we practice. Okay. So the notes I have related to um, the order of the agenda are whether or not to add approval of agenda, mm -hmm. whether or not to add a consent agenda, mm -hmm. um, should we have two different portions of public comment. I don't know where we landed on that. Um, and should we move public comment directly after the Pledge of Allegiance before we approve minutes? 
Well, I mean, just looking through this, like, um, one, uh, like again, Warrenville, like it actually has call to order, roll call, approval, changes to the agenda, and then presentations, and then they get into public comments, correspondence, consent agenda. That's what we had talked about too, the mm -hmm. consent agenda. Mm -hmm. And then like all the reports and the new business and stuff comes after that. Um, I think at our library though, because we consistently have public comment, which is not true of every library, it might be a good idea in consideration of those coming in to make public comment that we have it higher up. has order of business is call to order roll call consent agenda public comments uh, then I, items of business reports schedule of upcoming meetings and adjournment so that's not a very detailed one at all for sure uh, next one call to order pledge of allegiance uh, roll call recording both present and absent members oh, I wouldn't do that first uh, and then public comments, adoption of agenda, consent. So, I mean, it's really, it's all over the place. Nobody has, like, a, nobody's set with how they do this. Some of them have public comments after something. Some of them have it. One has it before. I'm trying to see what North Brook has here. But their, their bylaws are pretty long. I'm trying to find it. It's really interesting how... You know, some libraries have like four pages and others have 40. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, North Brooks is like huge here. For I don't really think they Did you see the Aurora one? Is that the one, one of the ones that looked at? I, don't know. I didn't get there yeah, that far yet. Yeah, I could look at it. I was looking at the North Brook one, but mm -hmm. I don't see their actual. Yeah, th theirs is so detailed. It's it's actually. You know, I feel like public comment in order to make it convenient for the public to have it, keep it at the top somewhere makes sense to me. Well, even in our rescinded uh, trustee manual, public comment was after pledge of allegiance. So that mm -hmm. was one of the reasons that this manual was rescinded was because it was different in certain places than the bylaws. There was conflict. But I know we had discussed looking at this, at the rescinded manual to see if there was anything we wanted to put back as well. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Skokies doesn't even, which I can't imagine, they maybe just ha don't have it on here, but they don't even have a public comments. It doesn't look like Call to order, approval of minutes, approval of consent agenda, approval of payment of the bills, report from there. Yeah. They, they, believe it or not, they don't even have Interesting. public it's comments very on it. Yeah. Unless they do it on the new business. They, you know, they let people talk on the new business. I don't know. I don't know. That is really, really weird. I think it makes sense to have it after the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. You think before payment of the, of the uh, approval of minutes, go back to that? It, it seems, I think so, because then you're starting the actual business of the meeting with the, with the minutes instead of, mm -hmm. I don't know, that just makes more sense to me. I agree. Yeah, you know, this one has, uh, what is this? I've got to say this for, uh, the Aurora, yeah, they have mm -hmm. additions to the agenda, approval of the previous minutes, and then public comments. I'm okay either way. They I don't mean, have the pledge on theirs. They don't. I wonder if they just do it and it's not on there. No, Probably. You're not required to do the pledge. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, agencies choose to do it, but I've actually seen libraries where there has been big discussion where some trustees do not want to do the Pledge of Allegiance for various reasons. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I feel as an elected, somebody who went through the election process and that we had the public vote for us and that's a United States thing. Not everybody in the world gets to vote. I, 
definitely always feel strongly about saying the play. So I will stick to that. Yeah, um, sure. I'll, yeah. I'll always hold my my stance on that. Um, yeah, I mean my 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 feelings on public comments have always you know I've haven't shied away from it. I think that public comments should be there. I like the idea of two different public comment sections. I know not everybody feels strongly on that. Uh, for the record, I'll state that because I don't know if, Valerie, you've heard this. I feel that public comments in the beginning should be about items that are on the agenda, and then we could have another public comment later on if people want to talk about other things that aren't on the agenda. Um, but my thing is that I don't want to hear about silly stuff before our meeting. Like, if, if they're going to talk about it, then let's let everybody talk about it. But on agenda items only, and then not agenda items. So that's how I feel. I mean, I know that's how the village does it across the street. I know there's a couple other entities that I've been to that do it that way. The village has two separate public comment they sections? They okay. have They have one after uh, approval of the payment of the bills, mm -hmm. and that's on uh, agenda items only. Mm -hmm. And then the other one's on, any, on not agenda items. So... I mean, I'd, I'd love to see that, but I just don't think they'll get the support here for that, too. I think that's a better discussion for when we do the public comment policy, okay. because that's separate from the bylaws. We just have order of business in the bylaws. Um, I have seen public comment policies that specify that uh, matters need to be specifically related to the agenda, but I think it's a better discussion for later. Okay. I don't think it should be part of this document. But if we're going to add a second public comment, then we would need to make that part of order of business, correct? We would, but that would come after we revise the policy, and I don't know that we're going to do that before the bylaws go before the board. Got you know it. what I mean? Okay, so then let's just keep one for now and yeah. leave it as is, I guess. Um, and my other concern about that, specifically with our meetings, is that our meetings are six hours long, mm -hmm. and I don't know that members of the public would stay until midnight to make public comment. And then we might be depriving them of making comments about things that aren't on the agenda, but they still want to share with the board. Well, we wouldn't be depriving them because they still have the ability to write in and have that into us 24 hours before the meeting. Mm -hmm. So if they know our meetings are long and they know that they can't stay, mm -hmm. they more than welcome to always give those comments, and then we just have to read them, right? That's so true it's, too. We're not. We still give them an avenue, mm -hmm. um, you know. And yeah, so okay. I mean, but I'm okay leaving it as is for now until we do the public comment. Because that's definitely, that public comment policy definitely needs to be looked at. We do sure. need to discuss that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we'll go. So then closer. we are, where are we then? Um, so we are going to stick with what's on roll call, pledge of allegiance, public comment's going to move above. Yeah, public comment can go to three, and then approval of minutes can go to four. Mm hmm. Okay, so then is treasurer's report. Payment of bills Payment usually bill comes on. before yeah. treasurer's Payment. report. And then, okay, so as we have it now, we have treasurer's report and then executive director's report. Communications secretary's report. So we having the secretary and treasurer report separately, kind of, and with the executive director in the middle, sounds it's kind of chopped up, isn't it? Basically yeah, I would. Should maybe have all the trustee reports or officer reports or. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we put uh, secretary right behind treasurer, mm -hmm. and then maybe move communications up for and make communicate. Uh, unless there's a different word we want to use for it, but maybe communications being where we do the trustee reports or what trustees want to talk about. Communications tend to be things like the um, the trainings that I've been putting in, okay. so they're separate from the trustee reports. I think if anything, we should either change secretary's report to officer's report or trustee's report and put it after the treasurer's report. I do think the treasurer's report should be separate because it's related to the funds. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you're, you're coming right out of payment. Of the, I actually, yeah. You know, yeah, payment of the bills needs to be there and then treasurer's would be there. Yeah, I would say then let's do maybe as number, I guess that would be number seven then. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could do, instead of secretary's report, we just do trustee. a trustee report. Yeah. 
and then I would say we could probably scratch the secretary's report, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that could go away. And then we'd go to executive director. And then we go to eight executive director. Nine would become communications. And then ten becomes new business. Unfinished business is eleven. And then executive session twelve. And so the parliamentarian did suggest that we have unfinished business before new business. Should we do that? Do you remember what the reason for that was? Because it's unfinished from the previous we meeting, take care of what's so we should take old care of what's new. Mm -hmm. Because in case you need to cut a meeting short for some reason, you're at least addressing what was already addressed at mm -hmm. the last meeting instead of delaying something, multiple meetings. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me either way. It's fine. So let's make unfinished ten and mm -hmm. new eleven. Executive session becomes twelve. 13 for other a action out of executive. I just want to back up for a second. We said last time, I think, that we were going to do committee reports in... Oh. In communications. In communications. Okay. Cool. Okay. I think that's good. So 12 is executive session, 13 is other, and then adjournment? Mm -hmm. Or no, action. 13 is action, 14 is other, and then 15 would be adjourned. Okay. What can we, uh, I guess this is, I don't know if this is the time to ask this, but just to put it on the radar, what can, I'd like to see what we can legally do for behavior of board members mm -hmm. um, and, and what we can do to protect future boards from having board members that are acting out of line or board members that are, I mean, honestly, harassing slash attacking employees. Because if it was, if, you know, we weren't elected officials here with this, attacking employees like this would be a real big issue. And it should be a real big issue. And we should be held to a higher standard than even anybody else. So I don't know what we could legally do. What I have seen at other libraries is an ethics statement in the bylaws which the trustees would agree to and I have also including at my previous library included the same information that's in the personnel policies in the bylaws for the board related to harassment anti-bullying and other policies that the library follows for staff that would also be included in the bylaws so that it's clear to board members as employers what their responsibilities are related to those employment practices. The only thing is what can we do? Like even putting those in there, mm -hmm. what, as, uh, as the library is an, as an employer of staff, mm -hmm. if somebody does those things, there's a way of, there's a written, you know, there's, there's documentation, there's disciplinary up to termination for those things we can't terminate a trustee yeah. from their position. So my, we could add all of the policies in there. I don't think it's a bad thing, but what I'm looking for is what can we legally do when a trustee does act out of line and does harass staff and does bully staff? Can we find out legally what we can do to put in there? I know we could, I know we could re we ask a trustee censure. to... Censure. Censure is yeah. the only thing I've been informed by our legal counsel that is possible toward an elected official. Well, we could ask them to leave the meeting, but we open ourselves for a lawsuit is what I was told. Correct. So, And there's two forms of censures, right? There's the verbal one like we did last week, and there's also a written one. You can pass a resolution yes, a that resolution. is a censure. Which okay. So you can pass a resolution that's a censure that's according to the legal counsel. Um, and... That is the only thing that I've been made aware of that can be done other than if there is potential harassment according to policies, you, the library again is open up to liability to a lawsuit. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even the censure, either way you do it, it's still just a, a verbal reprimand. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a reprimand that they can still continue to right. do what they're doing as we found out because Executive Director Marshall was harassed Right after the last meeting. I will not use that word. I will. Perfectly. <laughs> just say. Uh, okay, not harassed, but was uh, 
repeatedly ask for things that were not needed to be asked of her and interfering with what the job that the board has given her as a whole direct direction. Um, so I just, I, I worry about those things and what we could do. I just... I do appreciate the support of the board in the policies such as the delegation of authority to the director that allow me to follow the recommendations as listed in the trustee facts files which specifically state that um, I take direction from the full board as opposed to individual trustees so that is something that has already been implemented okay. and is very helpful. So um, we just put the censorship stuff in there of what we, you know, if trustees aren't acting appropriately the censorship. And, mm -hmm. You know, and if we do add in a code of ethics, you can reference yes. the code of ethics. You can reference the oath that trustees take upon taking office. Okay. Um, I can also look into further trainings related to um, professionalism on boards. I can try to find someone else to come in and talk about that. So there's someone at Rails who does trustee trainings okay. and is a trustee. Okay. So I'm going to try and potentially get him to come speak. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's look at that then. I think we talked before about adding a code of ethics, right, to mm -hmm. the bylaws, so yeah, that's definite. That. We have to do that. Okay. Absolutely. There is one from United for Libraries, which is from the American Library Association, but right. I did not bring it with me okay. today. That's okay. That's right. There's also one from um, Warrenville has one. I was also advised... Um, while this is not in practice in a lot of libraries, I was also advised by the library's attorney that, again, since I take direction from the majority of the board, if I get into a situation where I feel that there is inappropriate conduct, I can request, as, uh, as anyone can from their employer, I could request to not meet individually with any single trustee. Okay. So that may be something we also specify in the bylaws if you want to, if that's something that we're considering. Um, but I don't know that we want to go in that direction at this point because I am responsible, you know, to the library in general, and I will report to the full board if I have any challenges specifically. So that's what I've been trying to do is just report to the full board whenever there are individual challenges. Okay. And maybe we can specify that in the bylaws. Say if the if the library director because there is a section on my responsibilities and it's actually this the next section um, or one of the next sections in the library board bylaws template from the state library that says duties of the librarian. Mm -hmm. We could specify how I can report behaviors to the board specifically if you wanted to do that because I've seen that in other places but more for more for employment policies than actually in bylaws but since I am an employee of the board it might be good to spell that out mm -hmm. I think I'm missing a paper on my secretary of state stuff but that doesn't really matter So essentially something like a grievance process mm -hmm. that I could follow. Yeah. I think that the, what they have in the Secretary of State is very bare bones. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there is a section about it, that's just what I was referencing. Yeah. I, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I think for duties of the librarian, I think that's where the document that we just approved recently, that just goes right there. We could, we yeah. could add it specifically as part of the bylaws, or we could just say the um, executive director will follow the delegation of authority policy, whichever is easier. Because I know putting it in here requires an additional vote because of the five votes. It does, so. but it also requires an additional vote to strip any of that power away, too. It does. Oh, I so, would appreciate it. Yeah. I agree with that. I would, I would 
personally Just like the delegation of authority to be the whole duties of the librarian, that should be that section. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Agreed. Because otherwise, they, a, a four-person vote could strip it, and we don't need that to happen either. Mm -hmm. I do, and just because we're into this document, the, the new trustee section of the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. um, I think we need to have like the new trustees packet, which will include the library policy and other material. I think we should include the tour of the building. Mm -hmm. I think we should include a meeting with the executive director. Mm -hmm. I think all of that should be part of the first 90 days or so of being seated because we had to ask a lot of people on this board to go do their tour multiple times. Yeah. And maybe even like all the um, the bylaws and the policies and all that, like uh, you have to have all this read and sign off on it. Within the first 90 days. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Actually, the bylaws and stuff, they should sign off within the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. But doing the tour and stuff, first 90, because just this schedule conflicts and things, I get that. Mm -hmm. so. Definitely would like to see that in there. Okay, so yeah. add more detail under new trustees. Well, right. just the stuff that we're like we're going to go through the trustee training, the orientation. But yes, uh, maybe a timeline. Yeah, let's get some timelines on there that they have to be held accountable and sign off to. Because we had to basically beg. Also, re-elected trustees. From. So um, one of the comments just made was considering for re-elected trustees to have to review this or potentially another option, which is something that we do with employees, is having certain requirements of review either every year, every two years, making sure that these are reread. Because even if you've read them once, it doesn't mean you necessarily remember mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. But at sure. the same time, that could be accomplished as we're reviewing policies Which we're as the board. we're doing on a regular basis. Yes. And, and we're supposed that to, we're going to make a policy committee too, aren't we? We are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, but I mean, and that's to get these things done and like they're supposed to be done and then, you know, um, seated trustees would already be doing that because it's happening yeah. normally. Mm -hmm. But we're supposed to review the bylaws, what, every two years or every three years? Every two years, usually when a new board is seated, okay. because that's usually when these discussions come up so that the current board agrees on procedures. So then, but maybe we add that on there to, at some point for the like in our main meeting, every two years at the main meeting when a new board is seated, the bylaws will be handed out for review by everybody, and then... Any, anything that anybody suggests can be brought to the bylaws committee at that point. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to go back to the full board because it has to go through the committee first. Let's keep the steps in order. Yeah, you so can do that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, every two years the board shall review this document with a view to revising or adding to it as may be necessary. Mm -hmm. Yep, perfect. Maybe we just add every two years in May after the new board is seated or something. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It's not a horrible thing to just add. Just to, the more we add in there, the, the less confusion there could be. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a good spot with this. I mean... We have added a lot of good things. We have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've... I mean, is there... I, I guess looking back at it, I know we're, we've got notes everywhere, all of us yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, I guess the next thing that I would love to see is everything typed out like a new bylaws for us to review and then if there's any final changes otherwise maybe bring this to the next uh, July board meeting because mm -hmm. won't, we won't be done by June so J July, right. uh, the July board meeting I think we should have a final committee meeting before the July board meeting to look over the revisions to make sure that final document is what we want to bring to the board okay that makes sense yeah, yeah. and also we're going to want to look at potential code of ethics that we yeah. haven't talked about here today. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay with that. But I can type that up before our next scheduled bylaws committee meeting. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't think there's much more to really add to this. Or Do we want to go over the rescinded trustee manual to see if there's anything else we wanted to and include? Sure. We, we got 
got the library mission. We got the. Uh, oh, we went through some of this last time, but I could be wrong. Oh, we're changing the format. The agenda format. Mm -hmm, right. So that's that's done. Do we want to add voting procedures? It's on page two. Um, because they're not specifically referenced, but they are things that we talked about in parliamentary procedure. I think it's kind of, we kind of covers that in the end of the bylaws because it says uh, that we are going to use Robert's rules. We right? can. So, I just don't, I mean, know, I don't know, know how much detail we want specifically in the bylaws as opposed to saying we're following these laws, we're following this manual. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. I could have hurt putting voting procedures in there and voting roll call. Those two things would be, I guess it can't hurt. Well, we just said that more detail is better, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It can't hurt. Does this, The only what's written here, follow what we learned in parliamentary <clears throat> procedure and what we want to follow? Well, that's what I was just going to bring up. It says at the discretion of the president, additional time to comment may be granted or the item may be open for this. Question. We don't, there's nothing that's saying anything about a time here. I know there's been talks about a time limit. I do recommend that we discuss a time limit. I actually got information um, that the state senators implement a time limit whenever they have more than five items on their agenda, that they have no more than three to five minutes per senator to make a discussion about any singular item on the agenda and they can give their time to someone else if they want to, so that's something we could consider putting in here. But in order to take our meetings down from six hours, I think a time limit that is even across everyone would be appropriate. The only issue I have with a time limit is, so let's say I'll use myself as the example, so I'm not using anybody else picking on anybody. Um, let's say I brought up, you know, I made a comment, but I end that with a question to you. Mm -hmm. Now, now that opens up a discussion, so that's no longer a time to comment at that point because now we're into a discussion versus a comment. So let's say you come up with new information that during the discussion mm -hmm. I learned something, so now I want to make a comment on that. Like where is that? That's where it becomes sticky. Like if, if a senator's up there talking, they're up there talking uninterrupted by themselves and they get their time. In our meetings, and, and for lack of better reason a lot of meetings at smaller entities you have people that jump in things that discussions that take off it's like where does that discuss where does that time stop and start then I mean I think we would have to have timers in front of everyone and we have to govern ourselves uh, yeah. to not interrupt each other yeah well that's the thing I mean I know but I mean I don't know how else to <laughs> but like, like so look, look what I just like I just made that comment right so now and now you're having a discussion mm -hmm. about it. So if this takes away from my time, how would that be fair to me in that essence of, because let's say you had other things said and you said other things and now it comes back to me and now I have thoughts on what you both said, but now I'm down to 10 seconds. I'm not going to have that time to be able to do that. The reason that makes it fair is because everyone else got a chance to say their five minutes and you could ask someone else to yield their time to you if you really had a comment or a question. But this is the only way I can think of that fairly would make our meetings more efficient. See, I think our meetings, have, I mean, even though they've been long the last two, they were, I mean, they were some of our better meetings, honestly. But they're not efficient. They're, we get stuff done. Efficient, efficient, I, see, and I'm a big per, I'm a big believer, and trust me, I don't want to be here at 1 o'clock in the morning. That's mm -hmm. not what I want to do in my life. But there's, and I was here earlier this week, mm -hmm. met with you, I'm here tonight, oh, last week I met with you, I was here with my kids on Friday night, stayed for two hours for the event, I'm a big believer of, we don't have a time limit on our meetings because there is no set time limit for our meetings, it stinks, they take six hours, I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't, but I never, I, it's going to be tough for me to, because only because it's you're never uninterrupted, you're never uninterrupted on this board. So if I have something to say for five minutes and I get interrupted three times for three minutes, I just lost three of my minutes that I was talking. 
Not if you stop your clock, if you're getting interrupted. Oh, then right? nobody's, gonna, nobody's, gonna, nobody's gonna start that clock then. I, but that's, a, the whole idea of this discussion is mutual agreement on decorum. Yeah. That's what we're trying to get to with these rules, is mutual agreement on decorum and asking your questions before the meetings. Come talk to me. But others do believe that they should be able to ask those questions in public so that and the that's public sees fine. that. And that's, that's and fine. That's, that's part of their time, right? That's part of their time. A lot of this is the idea of getting business done when it needs to get done. And you can discuss the results of what we talked about in the meeting in a more efficient manner, summarize things, and still give transparency to the public. I mean, that's why I have a director's report, for example. I don't talk about every single thing I do every single day. No, I get that. You know. So if somebody wanted, for example, to talk about payment of the bills, and they wanted to ask a question on the bills, and it takes more than five minutes, then once they get to five minutes, they're done asking those questions? That would be the idea. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think that's a really good example. I like that example because those are the kinds of things they should be asking beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's kind of not something that gets interrupted as much either as more of things like, you know, when we have a presentation on a roof or something, right? And like you said, you say one thing and then it sparks an idea and somebody else and they want to jump in. But we do have to get these meetings a little bit more under control as far as time. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be here at 1 o'clock in the morning. Trust me. I don't think I it's fair to anybody. And, and honestly, I think... If we're going to do anything like that, I think there should be a cap put on uh, our meetings because we do have people that drive. I mean, we have staff here. We right. have ourselves mm -hmm. here. Like All of us have been up for hours upon hours. It's not like we slept in all day to come to a meeting. So uh, well, That's another idea is putting a cap on a meeting. A lot of places do set either limits on how many agenda items can go on the agenda or a hard stop time on the meetings. Given how much we have discussion, there are also other libraries and public entities that have one meeting during the month that is a committee of the whole where all of these discussions happen but no decisions are made. And so once you get to the actual meeting and you're voting on things, that part is more efficient. But I understand that this board is not necessarily willing to have multiple meetings per month. Well, and if you're going to have multiple meetings and one's going to be three hours and the other one's going to be three hours, you're still at six hours. But you're not at six hours in a row. Correct, but it's still six hours of time out of our houses and our lives that we have to still do. So is it better to do that in one day or is it better to do that over multiple days throughout the month? And then when you have a situation where you have a meeting like the bylaws meeting this week, you have we had a training last week, we have our regular meeting next week, you have... The budget meeting the following week it's like so if you had to have another meeting so now it's yeah. five meetings in a month and that's a well, lot part that's of this also leads to the discussion of separation from governance versus management too our board requests a lot more items to come to the board for decision than many other libraries do and that's part of where a lot of this comes from I i'm thinking about if we had just humoring the idea for a second that yeah. we had separate meetings one as a committee of the whole if you went to that meeting or whoever went to that meeting and it's running really long because we're talking about everything and you can't stay or you're, you're tired and you have to go to work like Sue goes to work so early in the morning and you leave that meeting there's really no repercussions because you didn't there's no votes right mm -hmm. and then you can catch up and listen to everything else that was said later and then you go back to the second meeting and it's just voting, right? Basically, there's not any discussion then because well, then it happened at the Committee of the Whole. Or you could have the time limits on the actual voting meeting because you've already had opportunity for discussion during Committee of the Whole. But let's say, like, I couldn't, let's, I'm going to use myself. I don't want to mm -hmm. use anybody else's example. Yeah. Let's say I couldn't get to that meeting. The voting meeting. No, no the, the oh, discussion that. meeting. Uh -huh. Now everything that I want to ask, I, could, I should be able to ask at the voting meeting because I wasn't able to attend the other meeting. I still, as an elected trustee, have the right to ask those questions. You can't stop anybody from really asking the questions. That's not the goal. It's just making a time limit so that people have their questions planned out in advance, have their idea of their statement planned out in advance, and are a little bit more prepared. No, I understand, I understand what you're trying to get to, yeah. but if I can't make a meeting, or somebody can't make yeah. a meeting, then they should be able to ask every question that they have. 
whether the time there's a time limit or not. Right. M maybe they would have our watch the rest of the meeting or listen to the meeting and then, well that would be the hope but right and then ask questions of the director as well and then come you know they should still be but able not to come the to the hope, meeting the prepared. requirement if it's in the bylaws the expectations are set clearly like you have to come prepared to these meetings but if they come prepared if somebody comes prepared to a meeting and the way that they want their questions answered is publicly for the public that votes I don't know we could restrict them from doing that though I don't know we can make it mandatory that they have to ask the questions ahead of time. I don't know we you don't have we can. to. You don't have to do that, but you can make the time limit mandatory in the bylaws if the majority of the board votes on it. We're not trying to restrict what's being asked, what's being discussed. It's just, just how long. It's just being how long it's being discussed. So if you go to the committee, or if you can't go to the committee of the whole, and then you do go to the regular meeting and you want to ask your questions, you still can. You just have to do it within the five minutes. Mm -hmm. Or you can ask someone to you give your, get their time to you. And then where do we come in, though, if nobody gives it to, let's say I use my five minutes and nobody gives me their five minutes, so then, now I'm, I'm out of luck. Then you have agreed to the bylaws time limit. But if I would have been at that other meeting, I could have talked for as long as I wanted, talked about whatever I wanted, and asked any questions. But if I can't get there for whether it's business purposes, life purposes, or I just can't make that meeting, that's... To me, that's not going to hold water for a trustee. The biggest challenge that I've seen with this board specifically, and it's not unique to this board, but it is um, a lesser practice, is that the idea is that you trust at least some of your other board members to have asked the questions that you're going to ask to have thoroughly researched things. That's why we have committees as well. The idea of having all of these committee meetings is that there at least is some trust put into the staff and the board members who engage in all of this work. That's why the parliamentarian recommended that the board does not engage in committee work. That's why our meetings are so long, is because the board does delve into managerial responsibilities and committee work. Well, in all fairness, we have one committee right now, two committees, so we don't have committees. I, the recommendation the is to have committees. Well, well, yeah, and we agree to that. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody in this room disagrees yeah. with that. It's, yeah. But until you get committees going, mm -hmm. who do you trust on these things? Sure. That's the, that's the problem, right? Like, how do you trust that this is being done? How do you trust that that's being done? How, now, if you said, like, when we talk about the bills and Roberto and things like that, you explained it to me. Mm -hmm. I haven't asked a question about a bill since because I trust the process. If I have a question, I'm going to go to probably Roberto first mm -hmm. and be like, hey, did you look at this, this, and this, and let him go take care of it. Yeah. Just like we have if somebody has to go to the attorney, they should copy you mirror on an email mm -hmm. so that way the attorney on the board could also that understand what's going on. That should also be added specifically to the bylaws. Can you restrict anybody from going to somebody that we hire and pay? I don't think you can. The attorney reports to the board, just like me. Does. Not to any specific individual trustee. So it depends on if you adopt that in your bylaws or not. But our attorney responds copying Umer. But what happens when, like, like what happens if we don't have an attorney on the board? Like, it just so happens right now we have an attorney on our board. I understand. You don't, it understand doesn't have things. to be that. You can require the... Um, be the, that the secretary is the, the one. The secretary, that. the president, the vice president. Oh. You could require that the full board is copied on any correspondence to the attorney so that the full board is aware of correspondence to the attorney. That's It's up to what you want to put in the bylaws, but I do think it's important to put it in the bylaws since it wasn't technically voted on from what I understand. That happened before I was here. I'm okay with adding something in there for that. That I'm okay with. I'm definitely not okay with the second meeting just to have conversation. That I'm not okay with just because I. not everybody's going to always be able to make that second meeting. We all have a lot going on and we've all committed to the one meeting and if I'm going to come here for three hours twice versus once for six hours, I'd rather do the once for six hours. It sucks, but I don't want to be here twice for three or four hours at a time. We do also, if the board would agree to it, we could meet on a Saturday or a Sunday so that six hours is during the day. 
<laughs> I think I'd rather meet twice yeah. than meet on the weekend. Yep. Yeah, I won't meet on the weekend. Mm -hmm. My weekend's my family time. Yep. I think maybe it's worth bringing to the board just the idea of it and see how everyone feels. The idea sure. of what? The two separate how, like, two meetings. The two separate meetings. I think I've already brought it up and, and the consensus no. has oh, okay. been no. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we have a hard enough time getting everybody to agree to budget meetings and things when we need a second right. meeting. It's yeah, it's hard to schedule, I know. I'm hoping that a consent agenda, if we move forward with it, might help with the timeliness of the meetings. It should. But it depends on if things get pulled out of consent agenda, because that could make the meetings longer. Right. Well, that's the problem. Like, on a consent, you can't ask questions unless you pull it out, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think a lot of things are going to start getting pulled out. Okay. So where are we then? Uh, we were talking about that we were in a good spot and we were yeah, coming back to have, yeah. we need to schedule another meeting then to go over. Yeah, I think we were just double checking the recent. Oh right, the thank you. I mean the board the meeting. Voting roll call. Yeah. So I when you read that bit about at the discretion of the president. Yeah. That's not. Well, can you read it again? Because this is different. I think. Just what I the voting procedures has uh, at the discretion of the oh, president an additional time okay. to comment may be granted. Or the item may be open for discussion. Thank you. I had jumped ahead. Okay. I mean, one of the things that I just think about is even like with the comments that are made, if people were just more informed and ready to talk about these things versus first talking them with somebody at the meeting, that would help. But again, you can't force anybody to. No, you can't force anything like that. You can set expectations, but that's why the time limit idea exists, because if you put in a parameter where someone has to come prepared, then it leads to them potentially preparing so that they can ask their questions within the time limit. I, I hate to even ask this because it's just more work, but is there any way we could find out how many times somebody's gone over five minutes? There's not unless we start timing everyone. And it's five minutes uninterrupted, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be uninterrupted. If everybody has like a stopwatch. But I know, it's it's self it's self policing, right? Yeah, it's I mean you 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 more need to put some I think you more need to put something in there with that we want to try to keep everybody's comments under five minutes. But is it five minutes total or five minutes per item? Per item. You'd still be up six hours. No, it would be about three hours, depending upon how many agenda items we have. Because if we have seven, seven agenda line. items and then 35 minutes per item, if all seven trustees use their five minutes. Which we won't all, at yeah. least not every time. No. Because yeah. five minutes is a long time. It is. Oh, it yeah. can be. That's what I mean. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever hit five minutes. Or you I'm could. sure they have. You could I'm agree. Sure. Believe it or not, I'm not sure. Cause, because then conversation starts. Well, that's the challenge, too. It might be better to even put in here uninterrupted. Expectations are that you will not interrupt another trustee. Good luck. <laughs> I know. All, it's just, of, this, it's gonna be, all it's of this gonna, is agreements, right? It's yeah. not, you know. I mean, that's how it should run. It should run smoothly that each person gets to say their piece before somebody else jumps in. I've watched enough meetings in different towns and been a part of enough different things that I've never yet seen it done that way. Mm -hmm. So I just, I mean, watch word of itself, Senate, Congress, they mm -hmm. all get yelled at when they're talking and hissed at and you hear gavels getting banged constantly. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's right. I just don't know how I feel about a full time limit on somebody. I mean, I think we need to do something to get the meetings down. I just, I don't know what the right thing to do is. Because I know we're going into this budget meeting. <coughs> and I know I'm not staying past midnight. I just know that already because I have I have to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning the next morning. And I have to go travel an hour and a half away from here. So I'm going to be, I mean, I have to be somewhere at 6 o'clock and I have to be an hour and a half drive. So there's no way I'm going home past midnight and getting yeah. two hours sleep. No, well, hopefully because it's just the budget. You know, it won't be. That's the hope. Yeah. So, 
again, it's it's how much. I think you, a clear thing is, like you said, Valerie, if people come prepared and people actually read their packet and people ask some questions ahead of time, things go smoother. Right. Not everybody's going to do that, unfortunately. Wow. Well, but the purpose of the bylaws is to write out expectations. Do you want to include expectations of trustees in preparation of meetings? Expectations, sure, but expectations that are legally allowed is the question. I don't know if we can, besides putting they need to come prepared, mm -hmm. well, if somebody's preparation is I come prepared and I want to ask questions in the meeting. Oh, I'm not saying that, but if you, it's not listed in here that you're expecting people to read their packets, for example. It's kind of an understood, but it's not actually in our bylaws. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that should be in there. I think that you know that could go under the whole. I, try, I guess maybe, maybe a, a section of trustee expectations, and with, it goes along with the ethics. Or the yeah, ethics mm -hmm. code of conduct. You know, of things of thing. that things that we're expected to do: not scream, not curse, not yeah. You know, all those things in there. Come prepared, mm -hmm. reading your packet. Right. I mean, ask your questions beforehand. To the best of your ability. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll be the first one to admit it. There's been times I've sat there and I come up with ten questions when there's a discussion going sure. on. Sure. I didn't think about that, and yeah. since I didn't know about that person's point of view, right. I had no way to. And I know that who marries changed his mind on voting a certain way because of discussion that's been right. had. So, going back to something different, I do also think we should include in the bylaws when agenda items should be given to yes. me because they yeah, are not that, that was in the manual it was not in the actual bylaws right. oh, i thought we talked about it i think we did talk about it about having it to you the wednesday before one week that's prior. right one week prior not the wednesday before because some meetings are on mondays and things Correct. like that but one week prior. well we also said yeah. since the, the board packet was going to come out on friday mm -hmm. that that was two days prior not that you're rushing last minute to add somebody right. else's agenda item yeah so i would say wednesday by the prior one one I would say one, week, one yeah. week prior by end of business day, though, okay. end of 5 p.m., end of, uh, I guess just end of business, so even if it's 8, 9 o'clock at night. It's and should we put back in there, because in the manual it says the president and the uh, director work together to put the agenda together? Right now the bylaws only say that it's my responsibility. And I would prefer to have a trustee I mean, my, I mean, involved. From a conversation that uh, Becky and I had, with the mayor a few months ago, it's like I think it's the president's agenda, right? Like I mean, that's what he said. Like in that, it's his, it's his agenda. He shares it with his trustees. Mm -hmm. It's put together by the village clerk or the village manager or the village clerk. So it would still be put together mm -hmm. by you, but it is Becky's yeah. uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. And then once she signs off on it, then that's the agenda. So I, I think it should be a collaboration. A collaboration. Yeah, yeah. I think that should be put in the bylaws. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that, yeah. Because then, that way, it starts. You put it together, but then the president ultimately—it's it's the president's bylaw. I mean, the president's uh, agenda. So. Yeah. I'm good with that. Do we want to put, if not a time limit on asking questions, then a hard stop on the meetings? Not, a, not yet. I no, because the problem becomes what if you have to go in, like, not right now, but you go into an executive session for like a union contract thing, yeah. and we're not through it, and let's say midnight came rolling around, mm -hmm. now you got to stop the meeting in the middle of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, as much as, like, we've already said five times, we don't want to be here that late, but I think sometimes when we are here that late, it's the only way we get things done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe when we review these two years from now, Maybe then we can cap it. Well, maybe we won't need to either. We may not. <laughs> um, do we want to add anything in here about the potential of having a parliamentary and add-on meetings? Do we think we need that, or do we think we're okay where we are? I don't know that I would put it in the bylaws, but I do think it's an option that we could have. Like, you can hire a contractor at any time to okay. come in. It's similar to the trainings. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea to have a parliamentarian at the meetings. I think that would be very helpful. But I think it would also be very expensive, so. Yeah, and I think we've gotten 
besides certain situations, we've gotten better um, than where we were six months ago. Yeah. It might be worth putting on the agenda for a future meeting to at least have a parliamentarian at one meeting to see how they run the meeting. So we could get someone to come in and actually run the meeting? You could, if the board agreed to it. Yeah, I would say let's do that after the budget cycle, mm -hmm. though. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think that, I don't think putting that in the bylaws makes no. sense. Okay, that's fine. And we already said we were going to add the part about the Friday delivery for the package, Yeah, right? Friday yeah. delivery. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it's one week prior, we have to have all the agenda items over. Right. Do we want to say something like agenda items that are submitted on what, a week prior to the meeting? Like, do we want to put a little something in there about, like, unless it's an emergency item that, I don't know, like came up after the Wednesday? Can we, I mean, you we can not, say we can still just do at it? the we discretion don't have of the president or something like that. But it has to be within 48 hours of the meeting, otherwise we can't change the agenda legally. Right. But like, if you know, if the pipes explode on Thursday afternoon and we get a quote for fixing it, we want to... If then the we pipes explode, usually, and that'll be part of the spending authority I'll work on in the future, okay. usually I would call and say I'm spending this money and report mm -hmm. on it afterwards. It wouldn't be a vote because we Can have to get that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I guess we could. I, I wouldn't be opposed to putting something in there, like you just said, though, about you know, if an agenda item or a hot topic item or something comes up between that Wednesday and 48 hours prior with president's approval mm -hmm. or something of that nature, you know, I, I would use that extending past there very, very tightly because mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to make it like a thing that it becomes, oh, well, yeah, you know, it's, right. it's got to be one of those, like, we had somebody in the library that caused the problem when we need to talk about security again, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's, a, that's an example of, like, hey, we got to add that to the agenda. You, you call me on a Monday morning, or Becky, I'm sorry, you call Becky on a Monday morning, yeah. and you're like, hey, this just happened. We got to add this on by 5 o'clock. Is mm -hmm. that okay? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, like, those type of situations that I would... I mean, honestly, any trustee coming with anything? No, it has to be like a very time-sensitive yep. issue or a very high priority and time-sensitive issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would almost say that there should there shouldn't be any trustee agenda items added past that Wednesday because we have plenty of time to come up with that. Yeah. So I guess really, if it was that time-sensitive, it wouldn't be coming from any trustee. It would be coming from Correct. Valerie. Yeah. Okay, then we don't even need to add that in. No. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want, while well, we're talking about that, should we add any any items received after that deadline? Will we move to the next regular board meetings agenda? So that way if somebody yeah. sends that on Thursday, your item was received, it'll be put on August meeting, let's just say. If it, yeah. If it's received after the Wednesday. And if it's something, that, I mean, but... Oh. So we're saying that, are we saying that every, anything that is submitted, any agenda item that is submitted is going to be on the agenda? No, right? No, it still gets put together by Valerie. Okay. It still gets approved by the president. But let's say I send something on Thursday at 12 o'clock. Valerie acknowledges that she received it, but it's past the deadline for July's meeting, or June's meeting, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that on July's meeting now for you. If it meets the same... Like, I, I just don't want anyone to think that, okay, they're going to have this request that would normally be put on the agenda and then just put it in late and think that it's going to automatically go to the next month's agenda. No, I think you should let it automatically then just Unless roll it's it all something over. that wouldn't have gotten on the agenda in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, should it's something we have... that we wouldn't put on the agenda this month and just because it is submitted later and you think, oh, it's going to get on there because if there's a loophole. But then that's where the president could turn around and send an email back to that trustee okay. and say, I looked at this, what is, you could ask, what, I mean, we were told, like, you know, George said he had, the trustees will talk to him about certain agenda items, and sometimes those agenda items get scratched, sometimes they get left on. Mm -hmm. So that's where, like, if I had something, you came to me like, hey, do you really need to talk about this? Like, what's the, yeah. you know, what's the reason behind this? And then you understand your agenda, and you control your agenda. Okay. Do 
do we want to do that or do we want to have, because I've heard uh, concerns from other trustees that in the past some agenda items have not been put on by the president just because the president disagreed with them. That's Should we include a parameter that says if a majority of board members agrees to add an agenda item, we will add it? Well, unfortunately, uh, the, the way that when the majority of the board had to call special meetings to get their agenda items and control the agenda, um, yeah, I mean, slippery slope. Yeah, if you, if the director and the president really are working collaboratively, I would. But I mean, I'm fine with that too. I just I've heard those concerns mentioned, so I wanted to bring it up. Yeah, maybe we think on that part for the next meeting. Yeah. Okay because that's a valid point. There were a lot of agenda items that were asked that never made it because the president didn't want it. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's one of those that if ethically and legally the agenda item should be on there, then the executive director should let the president know, like, hey, this this is why this is going on here, this is why. Maybe there needs to be justification when you're asking for an agenda item to be put on. Yeah. Not like this last meeting where we had somebody ask for an agenda item to be put on to review a document that didn't exist. Hmm. Like at least, hey, twice. I have this twice. I have this is what I'm asking for. Here's the agenda. Here's the document attached or starting the document talk talking point, so that it's not a waste of time for you and the executive director and and the board itself. Yeah. So maybe when we they, there's an agenda item sent in, there's an explanation behind why the agenda item is being asked to be put on, and then the executive director will have that before it even goes to the president. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Can we ask for that? Because I have been specifically told by certain board members that because they are board members, they are allowed to put agenda items on the agenda for discussion without justification. Well, that's not how it's gone in the past. That's true. <laughs> I bet doesn't say that anywhere, um, and if we put into the bylaws that, or whatever we end up putting in the mm -hmm. bylaws is what it's going to be. It's I'd not like going to be. put that in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. That there needs to be justification for why we're discussing something. And it, that, that may be an easier way to cut back on some time, because if somebody doesn't have justification on it, and they're not willing to give justification, then that agenda item doesn't make the agenda. Can we potentially add that same thing for any projects requested? Projects requested should be full board approval. Mm -hmm. And if the mm -hmm. majority of the board doesn't give the approval, then Can we put happen. that in the bylaws as well? Absolutely. I would definitely sign off on that. Are we going to need to come up with a like a template or like a, like what constitutes justification? Like, is it because that person thinks it's, you know, I mean, I, well, that's, this is that's what I'm be on the agenda because, about. yeah, right, how do we quantify that? How do you quantify that? And then does a trustee then say, you're denying me my right to have a discussion? But if it's in the bylaws that you have to be able to provide a reasoning behind it. I can ask the attorney. Yeah, because then yeah. who judges whether the reasoning is sound or not, you know? The well, I mean, even, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but even if, well, but even if at the same token, even if I came with something, let's say I wanted to talk about, I'll just use it, the 4th of July, uh, the 4th yeah. of July parade. And you're like, well, what do you want to talk about the 4th of July parade? Well, the whole event. Well. You'd be more like, what about the whole event you want to discuss? Maybe I could get that answer from you from marketing ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Now, and all of a sudden, you're killing it. Well, it takes a little more of your time, I know. Oh, it's not that. It it's kills that the. It depends on who I'm talking to, whether or not they will be forthcoming as far as that type of collaboration. You know what I mean? And I don't know that we can require that level of justification if someone wants to put on the agenda Fourth of July parade. You know what I mean? Because it is an upcoming event for the library. That's that's where we get, I think, sticky as far as what what is justification. You know. Okay. So yeah, we just got. So I guess let's see what the lawyer says. Okay. Okay. So my action items are to type up a template of all of the additions and changes that we have talked about thus far in all of these committee meetings, and to contact the attorney about the questions that we had today. Was there anything else? I'm just reading through the rest of the trustee manual to see if there's anything else we wanted to...
agenda items for discussion and vote require a documented explanation provided to trustees with pertinent details in their board packets. That was already in the manual. <laughs> Page four. There you go. Any agenda item documentation not included in the board packets on Friday will be removed from the agenda and rescheduled. Let's make that Wednesday. The revised board agenda will be posted on Friday. Let me see if any of the library has anything on this. Any of these packets that we have here. will support the compilation and completion of information requests by trustees to the library. Uh, that's one of the reasons why this is no longer exists. Because it's a horrible, horrible document. This trustee manual. The rescinded trustee manual, mm -hmm. I should say. Yes, yeah. this, is, this is where some of the trustees get confused, like on the Board of Trustees it says here like the Board shall have executive control over expenditures of all money, so it doesn't like, be in the rescinded trustee manual, so mm -hmm. some of these trustees are not remembering that this has been rescinded. rescinded. After they put their dictatorship trustee manual in effect. So something like agenda items that are requested to be, or requested agenda items for discussion and vote require a documented explanation with pertinent details to be provided to the director a week before, right? Something like that? Yeah, yeah. the director and the president. Yeah. But yeah, with the documented explanation. Schedule is probably the hardest <laughs> to work with. So, how many well, where, would where, you like? Where are we looking? Yeah, where are we looking at? Because we have after the, board the budget. And, yeah. So definitely in July. I would say after July Fourth, because we have the July Fourth parade. Um. I'm gonna have, my my calendar frees up a little bit in July. Do we want to do it before the July board meeting? I think so, because we were talking about presenting, it presenting this right. at the July board meeting. So maybe Wednesday the 10th? I can't, sorry. Okay, no, that's okay. Uh, I, can't do the, I can't do the 9th or the 10th. I could do any other night that week, as of right now. Uh, and the 12th, sorry. Maybe. I could do Monday or Thursday, I'm sorry. Maybe Monday the 8th? Monday I'm the 8th. totally open on Monday the 8th. Okay. Do we want to Let me do double check in here. Hang on a second. I apologize. Just baseball season will be over at some point. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I think the eighth is good. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to do six thirty like we did today, or seven? Well, yeah, or six? I'm, I'm wide open at night. Six thirty is good. Okay. Six thirty is good. That works for me. This room again, too? I'll have to check. Oh, you'll have to yeah, that's true. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. Okay. All right, sounds good. Do we have any other? I do not have any other. I do not. Do okay. you? Nope. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion. To, I motion to adjourn the meeting at seven forty-three. Second.
President King? Yes. Vice President Junko? Yes. And a yes. Everybody thinks it's from my 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 Everybody thinks it's from my